Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WooCommerce Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to create a custom 404 page in Next.js. And in this video, we're going to learn about how to create um, all the pages dynamically. So whatever pages you have in WordPress, you want to be able to dynamically create them in Next.js. Of course, you don't want to create all the pages in case, let's say you have like thousand pages on WordPress, but you want to be able to clear, create at least a few of them. And then you can let the others be created on the fly, okay? Like when the user actually visits them. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go to my pull request, which is this one, uh, block pull request, and then look for dot 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 slug dot js. Look for pages slash dot 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 slug dot js, which is this one. So what you need to do basically is go to your pages directory and create a file called brackets dot 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 slug brackets dot js. Notice this, this um, structure of the name is slightly different than when we actually created our blog. This was slug, right? So what's the difference between these two? Well, when we say slug, that means I'm catching a single route, like maybe hello world, or it could be something else like, um, hi there. Okay, so you're only catching a single level route. But when we are doing so this was in case of slug dot js. Okay, but when we are doing the dot 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 slug dot js this means we are catching all the routes okay when we say all the route it means it could be hello or maybe this could be like hello world slash something or it could be like there could be another one something something okay so, because sometimes you have like a parent, let's say you have a parent page and then you have a child page. Like in this example, let's say you have a parent page slug and then you have a child page slug. So you could have like different structure. It could be two, it could be three, it could be even more. Like, so chain like that in hierarchy. So, uh, so in that case, this is gonna catch all the routes basically, all right? So that's why we're using slash slug because tomorrow if you create parent and child page in WordPress, your next year's application should be able to handle that. And that's why we're doing this. Okay, excellent. So now I'm gonna just go and copy this. A lot of this will make sense to you if you already watched the previous video. So I'm not going to go deep into this because I already covered uh, main portions of how these things work into my uh, videos where I explain how to create post uh, pages. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain to you in simple words. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's see what's what's happening here. So the first thing we need to do is basically create all the static parts. So how do we do that? The first thing we need is we want to be able to make a REST API call and get the pages. So we need to create this function. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to look for get pages function. And I'm going to go to utils blog.js under source. And I'm just going to paste this function here. I'll explain to you what it does. So this function is going to make a call to the get pages endpoint. Of course, we haven't created that. So let's create that. So under constant endpoints, let's create that. So I'm going to look for that constant. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so this endpoint is slash wpjson slash wp slash v2 slash pages. So this is your WordPress uh, core endpoint and this is gonna give you the list of all the pages. So if you try to hit, if you try to hit this URL, you're gonna get all the pages. So you can see you're getting like, how many, I think 10. So it gives you 10 by default. Yeah, 10 of them, all right. And you can access a particular page also by putting its ID like that. So then it'll give you only that page with that ID, okay? 
but right now we're interested in the pages. So that's what we've created. We've created a constant for that URL, uh, for that endpoint. And we're gonna use it here, so we'll just pull it like that. And let's pull that on the top, imported it. Okay, then we just return it in case if the status is 200, then it's just gonna say response dash dot data, otherwise an empty array and catch the error in case any. So we'll use, okay, sorry, I think this is the one, yep. Yeah. So, and notice that I'm using underscore embed. This is to ensure we get the featured image data. If I don't use that, I'm not gonna get the featured image data. So featured image data is actually available under the embed. So if you pass, so now you can see there is no featured image information, but if I say embed, you'll start getting that. There you go, embed. And then well, if you have source URL, then it's gonna show that, okay? Great, um, so get pages. And then we check if it's an array, we loop through it, and then basically get the path name from the URL. So what happens is you'll notice that when we get the URL, let's say this was this this is actually containing the um, root URL also. We want to extract just this. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we can do that in JavaScript. I'm going to create a function for that so we can reuse it elsewhere. So look for that function. And put that under miscellaneous. I mean, you could put that in slug.js as well. So I'm just putting it here, but you can move that there also because it's related to slugs right so what's happening here you'll take the new url uh, uh, you'll take the url uh, and instantiate a new object uh, using the url and then just access the path name so let me show you this one so let's say so i'll show you in console so let's say this was the url okay paste that there and hit enter so now if you access the url you get an object and in that you have a path name, right? So this is what we need to build our static paths. If the URL is just, let's say if this was just the root, which means he was accessing the home page, then this becomes what the path name is just root. Okay. So this will keep changing depending on you know, what is available in the URL. So that's all that function is doing. Just getting the path name from the URL. Just gonna pull that on top. Uh, so we pass the page dot link, and then it's gonna give us that just this part test parent and test child. In case if it's any other, then it just give us test parent. Then we build the paths data. If we are building pages dynamically, we have to make sure we don't include the ones we have created manually. Which means under pages, anything we build manually, like thank you. Uh, your index.js, which is the root URL, checkout, cart, um, then, of course, 404 also, uh, then blog index.js, so slash blog, right? So all of this should not be included while building this, because if you do that, you're going to get an error. You could try that if you want to, like, if you're interested, if you're curious, if you don't use this function, you're going to get that error. If you have these pages, in WordPress, which name, which are named as cart, checkout, thank you, um, even the home page with the root URL, then you're gonna start getting error when you build it. So make sure to exclude them. So for that, we need this function. So I'm going to use this function, create this function inside of slug.js and put that on the top. So what does it do? Basically, taking an array and making sure adding these, okay? So, of course, you won't create a 404 on WordPress page. I expect you not to add that on WordPress. I'm not including that here. Uh, but if you think somebody will create a 404, please, please go ahead and include that over here. So any page that you create in WordPress, which is, has the same name as these custom pages, make sure you add that here. So I've created blog index, which means slash blog, so I'm gonna add that. I've created index, 
It's a home page. I've added that. Great. Check out cart and thank you. Check out cart and thank you. So these pages URLs need to be excluded while building the uh, pages dynamically under this slug.js. All I'm doing is checking that if it includes, um, then it's a custom page URI and that should not be included. So I'm saying not, do not include those. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm getting the path name and I'm looping through, splitting them and passing the slugs. Okay, splitting them with this. So in case if I have something like this, it'll be split into two like hello comma hi. Okay, I get the slugs, I pass that here. And then I put the fallback and then pass it. I've already explained what this does in the previous video, so I won't be explaining it again. You can watch the previous videos. Then that path data is available. It'll create that path. I've explained more that more in comments also you can read them. And then inside of the get static props, we get the header data, we get the page data. Uh, this time we just pop the last element. So what's going to happen is the slug is going to be like an array. So if let's say this was the URL, it's going to give me like this array foo and bar. Okay. So I only want the last item. Why? Because when we're trying to access a page by its slug, let's say, let's say we're accessing this test child. Now the, the array in array, I'm going to get test parent comma test child, but we don't want that because you can see that the slug is actually the last element of this, right? So that's what we need. That's why when we get the array here in params.slug, we only we're popping up the last item. And then we're making a call to get page function, which we have to create, of course. So let's create that. Get page. There you go. This one. So we'll add that under blog.js. The job of this is to take the page slug and pass that inside of the URL. Slug equals whatever the page slug is and an embed. And similar to get pages, this is going to give us the um, page data by slug. So you, the uh, endpoint becomes like this pages, slug equals whatever the slug is, and then embed to get the featured image. Okay, so we call that, we call that, and then we get the page data, we get the first element because it gives us an array and we get the first item as the uh, page with that slug. And then we just pass it through handle redirects and returns data. The job of which is basically to return, uh, to redirect the user to like 404 or 503, depending on if the data is um, available or not available. And we already have a custom 404 page. I have explained this whole thing in the previous videos. You can watch that. Okay. So we return the data. This data becomes available to our page. You have header footer, you have page data. Uh, in case, because we're going to be building only 10 pages uh, by default, because remember, the pages endpoint only gives us 10. So if I say, so this page is, I just showed it to you, this only gives us 10 pages, which means only 10 static pages are going to be built and available in cache. If the user acts, tries to access a URL uh, with the page slug that has not been available, uh, in, that is not available in the cache, that was not built at the build time, then... Uh, that means get static props are going to be called. We'll get that, get the data of that page um, on the fly using that slug. And then until that this request is not complete, we'll show the loading to the user using his fallback. And once the request is complete, we have the data available. We passed to the page you know, under page data and then We'll pass the page data Yoast head JSON, which is already available. You can see Yoast head JSON is available for SEO purposes. And then you have the figure, you have the image, uh, you have the post meta, which I explained to you in the previous video. You have the heading, you have the content, all of that. Okay. So that's what happens here. So now if I go back, so now if you go to pages in WordPress, Let's say we want to go to sample page. So URL will be this. So go to slash sample page. We have to fix this. Go to our SEO component, components, SEO index, and just check is array imported from Lodash. And let's try that. 
Okay, great. So now you can see that, uh, of course, there's Gutenberg styles are also coming, which I showed you in the previous videos to how to implement Gutenberg styles, how to ensure Gutenberg styles are supported. You can see this all WordPress styles are coming in for Gutenberg, which is great.